Hello everyone, Wolfring here. So today we're going to look at another number theory problem. So the problem looks like this. We want to solve for distinct x and y that belongs to natural number and satisfy x to the degree of y equals to y to the degree of x. Um, of course, if x equals to y, then um, any number can, any natural number can satisfy this. So we're looking for x and y are distinct, uh, distinct natural numbers. So usually for those kind of problem, um, the solution will be a very small uh, set. Um, the task is just trying to establish the relationship between x and y and show that the majority of the natural numbers doesn't satisfy uh, this relationship. And also another thing, uh, another technique we usually use is that notice that here um, the equation is symmetric between x and y, which means we can safely assume x larger than y, x is larger than y, or y is larger than x, uh, without losing any generality. Okay. So um, let's look at this problem. So first, um, we try to evaluate the uh, prime factors of x and y. So it's pretty straightforward to think about that x and y should share the same set of prime factors. Why? Uh, because the prime number cannot be written as a, a product of any other prime numbers. So if there's a unique prime factor in x that y doesn't have, then this prime factor also exists in, y, in x to the degree of y. And then it cannot be constructed uh, by y or y to the degree of x. Um, same, uh, uh, vice versa. So y, if y have the uh, unique prime factor, it cannot be expressed in terms of x. So in this case, we can get a conclusion that based on the condition here and based on the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which is just uh, prime factorization, x and y have the same set of prime factors, and we can denote uh, the, the set of prime factors are p1, p2, all the way to pk. So x and y can be expressed in these terms. Notice that ai doesn't equal to bi. And ai and bi are both um, natural numbers. OK. Now we can plug those two back into the original equation. So we can get a1 times y equals to b1 times x all the way to ak times y equals to bk times x. Now, next we're going to use the, uh, symmet uh, the symmetry of the uh, equation. Um, and since x doesn't equal to y, we can assume x is uh, less than y, or y is larger than x. Now, if y is larger than x, and we look at uh, those equations, we notice that because a1 times y must needs to equal to b1 times x, if y is larger than x, then a1 is smaller than b1. And it is true for ai, for all ai and bi. So ai must be less than bi. Okay. Um, and then if we plug those back into the definition of x and y, we notice that uh, in this case, y divided by x can be expressed by p1 to the degree of b1 minus a1, p2 to the degree of b2 minus b, uh, a2, all the way to pk equals to, to the degree of bk minus ak. Because all ai is less than bi, so the uh, index for each pi is actually larger than 0. So y over x is actually an integer, um, which means x can divide y. Now, this is a very important conclusion. Uh, equivalently, we can write y equals to kx, which k is a natural number. So, uh, and we plug that back into the original equation. We get x to the degree of kx equals to kx to the degree of x. And we take the x uh, root on both sides and divide x on both sides. So we get x to the degree of k minus 1 equals to k. Okay. So we can solve this equation instead of the original one. And this one is much easier uh, to solve. So first, uh, we have another condition that because y is larger than x and y equals to kx, so k is larger than 1 here. 
We notice that on the left hand side it is an exponential item and on the right hand side it's just k or increase as arithmetic item. So um, intuitively we know that the left hand side grows much faster than the right hand side in terms of k, right? Um, so which means the equality if can be obtained can only be obtained when x and k are very small. So I actually want to evaluate if x is larger than 2, then x to the degree of k minus 1 is larger than 2 to the degree of k minus 1, which is 1 plus 1 to the degree of k minus 1. And we can apply the um, binomial uh, expansion here. So this is larger or equal to the first two items add together, uh, the first two items of the expansion, which is 1 plus k minus 1 times 1, which is k. So, this, so there are two inequalities here. The first one cannot take equal sign, which means when x is larger than 2, x to the degree of k minus 1 is larger than k, which means it can, this equality cannot be obtained, which means k x, uh, when x is larger than 2, there is no solution to this equation, which means x can only be 1 or 2, right? Now let's take a look at 1 or 2. If x is 1, we plug this back into the original equation, we get k equals to 1. But we already, already state that um, k is larger than 1. This is a contradiction, so x equals to 1 cannot be a solution. Next, we look at x equals to 2. This gives us x to the degree of k minus 1 equals to 2 to the degree of k minus 1, which based on the previous proof that this is larger or equal to k, and the equal sign equality is obtained when k equals to 2. So here, when x equals to 2, k can only k equals to 2. This is the solution. So we get a unique integer solution for this equation, x equals to 2, k equals to 2. Plug this back into the original equation when uh, y equals to kx. So we get x equals to 2, y equals to 4 is a solution. And if we plug this back into the original equation, so 2 to the degree of 4 equals to 16, and uh, 4 to the degree of 2, is, which is 4 squared, equals to 16. So this is, this, uh, is the right solution. And that's it for today.